Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to get started using Trade Skill Master 4.10 with Professions. In my previous video we covered the basic groups and operations. Here we're going to expand on that to include the process of how you restock professions and what operations to use with them. In this case it's going to be crafting operations. What I'll do is use a real world example with Al Morte, my blacksmith, and show you how TSM works to help you streamline the process, to help you choose what to craft, keep track of what to restock when it's sold, and help you gather the materials needed, and then list them easily on the auction house. That's what professions are all about really, crafting items and selling them to players for more than it costs to craft them. You're trading the time it took you to learn the profession, and your skill in getting the materials cheaply for an end product that the other player wants to buy. So how do we start? First you make a list of things you want to craft. This will be your profession group. There are a number of ways to create this group. You can build it from items in your bags, import other people's, or get TSM to make a group for you based on what you know how to craft. I'll show you that last one. You go into the professions window and tell TSM to create the profession group. This will then take all the things that you can possibly make with that profession on that character and split it into items and materials. You can then decide to further split the groups and organise them based on what they are and what you want to do with them. In this example of BFA blacksmithing, I'm going to start separating them by type. All the honourable gear can go together, all the monol hardened gear can go together. I'll make groups for Notorious, Sinister and Uncanny. I'll put this all in one big BFA group because I've got a few vanilla recipes as well, so it makes sense to keep those separate and put them in a separate group. So with a bit of thinking and organising, I further categorise these into Combatants gear, mount equipment and, and I have some sort of order that makes sense to me. I'm making subgroups here based on item types and what makes sense to me. Further down the line I'll make even more subgroups based on what I want to do with them. Now that everything is organised it's time to decide what we actually want to craft and keep a stock of and how much stock to keep. This can be a bit overwhelming when you have so many items, so partly it will come down to experimentation and experience. TSM can help us choose by looking at the crafting reports, selecting our character and ordering the list by either profit or sale rate. I can see here that the mount equipment has a good sale rate. The uncanny gear is also doing okay. The weapons are doing better than the other armour mainly, so it may be worth splitting that group. I'll ignore the notorious one because that's in the older tier. The follow equipment might be possible, but it doesn't have a profit assigned to it. It probably uses a material that TSM doesn't have a price for. I imagine it's hydrocore. We can fix those by setting a manual price for it. I've already done this for Expulsum because I use the Bracer Super Shuffle to get my Expulsum and the price is set there. This is one of the important parts of TSM and Professions. We need to keep an eye on the material price that dictates the crafting cost. That's why I have so much information displayed in the tooltip so I can see what TSM is thinking and the prices it's using for crafting. If you need to change the price of a material you can do this in this section on the right and search for the material there. Say for example Hydrocore. I could put in a fixed price for this based on how much time it takes me to get them. I'm not a big mythic dungeon person so I don't get them that readily. So I'll put a flat rate of say a thousand gold here. That will at least give TSM something to work with. In all likelihood I'm not going to run mythics on this character so they're not going to be part of my crafting list. You'll also notice I've changed my default crafting price. I like to use Smart Average Buy for a lot of my prices because I buy a lot of my materials on the auction house and this makes the most sense to me. Smart Average Buy is a new variable to TSM 4.10. It's the average price of the items you have in your bags and your bank, as opposed to the average buy, which is a historical price of all time. It used to be part of the settings in accounting that you could toggle on or off. I've added it here along with the original average buy variable with a first function, so in all likelihood TSM will use Smart Average Buy, but if it doesn't, it'll use Average Buy instead. So you go back into the craft list, you can see now TSM has a profit figure for the follower equipment, not that I'll use it in this case. Okay, so back to my groups. We've identified a few that we might like to craft. Let's make some crafting operations. This is where you decide how many of each item you want to craft and assign crafting operations to the group. You can further split your group if you have differing amounts you want to craft. The important part of the crafting operation is the number in the max restock quantity. This is how I differentiate my different crafting operations by the number I want to make. The other part is the minimum profit. You want to tell TSM to only craft the items if they're going to give you a profit. The figure here already takes into account the crafting cost, so this is pure profit. I usually use a small percentage of crafting cost, like uh, 10 or 20% crafting. You can also use a fixed gold amount here if you wish. Once I've made one operation, I can copy it 
and adjust the figures to make a selection of different operations for me to choose which ones I want to use depending on the group. So back to my groups. I'm now going to go one step further because this uncanny gear needs special treatment. First I'm going to split it into armour and weapons, because in my experience the weapons are better sellers. When you craft this gear, you get a random variation like of the Fever Flare or of the Peerless. TSM allows you to choose whether you want to differentiate between them or not. You will notice from the current list that none of the variations are in here, just the base items. When you create a group with these items, you will have a choice of ignore variations or not. This will affect how TSM treats those items, either as individual varieties or as one block of the same item. Just to make matters even more interesting, this is the one time an item can actually be in two groups, one with variations and one without. I'm going to split the weapons into two groups, crafting and selling. The group with the crafting operation will have ignore variations selected, because TSM can't actually make the specific variety, it's random when you make it. The group that does all the selling, you might want to price them individually based on the variety, so that group would have all the variations in. Now we don't have those variations in our list, so we need to find them. We could start making some and add them as we make them, but a new feature of TSM 4.10 allows us to search in the base group for any item. There are loads of different uncanny gear from other professions, so I'm going to have to type in practically the whole name before it gets to the variations I want. Once we get to something more precise, we, here we have all the variations, both Horde and Alliance versions. We could select them all by right click dragging and then put them into the group, but as I'm Alliance it's probably cleaner to keep these just the ones I need, so I'll take all the Horde ones out. We still need to do this for the other weapons, so this list will quickly get pretty big. With all that done, now we have two groups, crafting with ignore variations checked and selling with ignore variations unchecked. This massive list is all the different types we might want to sell at a specific price depending on the variation. I hope that makes sense. It's kind of a unique situation with the uncanny gear, but common enough that it's worth talking about. So with that taken care of, we can assign crafting operations to some of our groups and use differing amounts based on our research and experience. So say for example, the uncanny armor, we'll make one each of those. The weapons, let's make two each of those. And the mount equipment, we're gonna make five of each of those. Right, so now we can begin the process of restocking some gear. You go to your professions window, under crafting, the TSM groups tab will show your groups that have a crafting operation assigned. They are selected by default here, so the next step is to click restock selected groups. TSM will check against what it knows you have on the auction house, or stored in your banks, and what you have in your bags, and cross-reference that with how many of each you have said you want to have in stock. The crafting queue on the right is now a list of all the things TSM thinks you should make in order to get to the number in the crafting operation for that item. As this is the first time, we are making the full set of everything here. The numbers in the right show us the amount to be crafted. They are coloured red at the moment here because we are missing materials to make them. We can adjust the width of the column by dragging the middle line. The list itself is ordered by highest profit first. If you hover over the items, you can see the profit and materials required. Now if we move over to the gathering tab, you can see here the list of things we need to collect and where to get them from. The list of sources on the left here tells TSM what priority order to use. Now the process of gathering begins. We can use the task list to help us collect the materials, either click the button at the bottom or type slash TSM space task list. You see we have some other reminders here like cooldowns and expirations. I'll minimize these so we can focus on the gathering. Some we need from the guild bank, some from the auction house and some from the vendor. I'll head to the guild bank and get those first. With the guild bank open, the button in the task list changes to move, so all we need to do now is press that once and TSM will pick out the exact items from our guild bank. It doesn't matter which tab it's in, give it a few moments and everything will get collected up. Now on to the vendor. I'll borrow this Brutosaurus, it's so close. You have to make sure you do this with the TSM vendor window and not the standard WoW interface. The button in the task list changes to buy and then we can buy what we need. Ah, our vendors vanished just at the wrong time, just as we were pressing the button. No matter, we can come back to that later. The task list will refresh once we collect some more things. Let's head to the auction house and pick up the ore. When you open the auction house window and have the browse tab selected, the button in the task list now changes to scan all. Press that and TSM will scan for all the items you need. If you have multiple items in the list, they'll all get scanned for at once. Now we see our ore here. It's a bit expensive at the moment. Normally I like to stock up on it when it's cheap, but for the purposes of demonstration, I'll buy what I need now. Select the first item in the list, click buy out. Now TSM has already pre-filled the quantity with the exact amount we need. 
as these are expensive I'll buy just what I need now. If they were cheaper I'd buy more than I need so I've got some good stock available for later. Now that we've bought those we need to go pick them up from the mail. Once I've done that you now can see the task list has refreshed and now shows us that we need to go visit the vendor again. I'll head over to my friendly neighbourhood blacksmith and buy the durable flux there. Right now we can simply click buy and TSM will purchase the exact amount we need. Ok we can close the task list, that part is done. Opening the profession window and the gathering tab is now completely blank, so we've got everything we need. If you look in the crafting tab, we have our list here and all the numbers are now green, meaning we have all the materials required. The craft next button will start crafting the first item in the list. Time to craft tells us how long it will take to make everything, and then we've got a total crafting cost and estimated profit as shown as well. If you set your scroll wheel macro to up to craft, then you can quickly use that to run through and craft everything in the list. There we are, that's the restocking process taken care of. Next up is to create some auctioning operations to sell the items. I'll start with the armour and create a new operation. Let's call it crafting sell. The post cap I'll leave at 5 because that's the most I'm crafting at any one time. I'm going to change the duration to 12 hours to help with deposit fees. Now we need to look at the min, max and normal prices. I'm going to use three of the ones from the default list here. Crafting, DB market and DB region market average. Crafting is the important one here. We don't want to sell for less than the price to make them. I'm going to add max here, so if crafting is the highest, TSM will use that. I'm going to add some percentages in to account for a little margin and auction house fees. Let's say 110% for crafting. I'll set the other ones lower to something like 60%. DB market is the average market price in our realm, and DB region market is for the entire region. By using 60%, I'm saying I'm prepared to go a little lower than the market average, but never lower than the cost it is to make them. For the other two, I'll use the same string but increase the percentages to give TSM a range of prices to work with him. Now I need to assign this operation to the other groups. The uncanny weapons need the same operation. We put this in the selling group, because the crafting group gets the crafting operation, and then I'll add this to the mount equipment as well. Now to make sure that none of the other groups have crafting or auctioning operations assigned to them, it's worth going to the base blacksmithing group and making sure to override the default operations and turn them off there. You could do the same effectively by removing the default from the base group. That works well too. It's down to personal preference which you choose. Once we have our auctioning operations set up, let's go to the auction house and see what kind of price they go for. Ok, in the auctioning tab we can run a post scan for all our groups with auctioning operations. Because we turned off the base group we see just the ones we specifically want to sell. Let's make this window a little bit bigger so we can see the names properly. Right, some of these are below minimum price. It's worth having a look at them and deciding if we want to change our operation. Ok, it looks like the crafting price is fine, we are well within the profit margins, crafting cost is about a thousand, but we haven't allowed for enough market variation. So let's go back into the operation, I'll adjust the percentage for market price to 50%, so we're a bit more flexible with how much the price can vary. Ok, only one is below minimum now. I'm going to go back and change what TSM does, and tell it to post anyway. We might still get a sale as the price is reasonable. Now when we do a post scan, everything we made is going on and fingers crossed we'll get some sales. The prices look really good, I'll use the scroll wheel macro to post all of these on, and then we're done. When I come back later, if anything is sold, I can go back into my profession window and tell TSM to restock my groups. Only the sold items will get restocked if they are still in profit, and so the cycle continues. We carry on posting and restocking, only ever crafting and selling when something is in profit. And you can grow your profession from here, expanding and tweaking the groups, adding items in as you learn them, or trying out new markets. All the work is in the setup. Once done, the process is simple. Please also note that some professions need some very specific material prices to get the most out of them, but that's for another video where I go into each profession in more detail. I hope you found this video useful, please do leave any questions in the comments below. Until next time, happy cold making, and I'll see you very soon.